I mean, look at these twists though. Like they are practically perfect. I remember the days when I used to have just straight struggle twists. I mean, I didn't even know how to flat twist before I went natural. Like the shit I wish I would have known before going natural is abundant. <laughs> people welcome so in today's video I'm gonna share with you five things I wish I knew before going natural I would never ever change it <laughs> nothing about natural hair displeases me but there are things I wish I knew and the list is long so these are just the top five the first thing I wish I really understood is what a journey detangling is I have gone through so much like YouTube really wasn't a thing when I started um, back in 2004 with my hair. I didn't know anything about finger detangling. I was ripping a comb through my hair. I know for like for sure because I didn't know how to comb, use a comb. My mother definitely didn't. Um, and when YouTube got bigger, people started to show how they were detangling their hair. I learned more. I also learned from hairstylists a lot about using combs and brushes properly. I learned a lot from them. I learned finger detangling, I think, from YouTube more than anywhere else. But just the journey of trying so many things, trying so many concoctions to properly detangle, when it really came down to technique, I learned, you know, the techniques I was using to shampoo were causing tangles, right? Uh, detangling the things I was doing, like how I was detangling was causing tangles. And uh, overall, just my hair care routine and making sure that I wasn't causing knots and things. I wish I would have understood how much of a journey that was so I would have more patience with myself. But I've learned and hopefully what I share helps you all. And then in the same vein of like learning more about my hair, Learning that moisture is the key to all success. <laughs> Never letting my hair dry out. That is the hard lesson I learned over the years that I wish somebody just would have told me, right? That just because the style looks really good on dry hair doesn't mean I should just leave my hair dry, right? For the sake of the style. I just need to figure out how to style my hair in that case, right? I mean, I cannot tell you what pain I could have saved myself if I just knew that bit of information like that small little bit of information I would have prioritized keeping my hair moisturized long before I figured that out once I figured that out man I like this length of hair just it's so healthy I don't get a bunch of knots all the time detangling is easier most products work my styles look better like just understanding that I if I never let my hair dry out my hair will behave completely differently one that we all fell into, and we I think people still do, is the whole trap of hair typing, right? Like me thinking, okay, I have 4C hair, so I can't do this and I can't do that, right? That's the trap of hair typing. Or not knowing what hair type I have, like, and trying to get a wash and go that looks like someone else's, because in in the chart, it says that if you are 4A, then you're, you should be able to get a wash and go like this, but my wash and goes don't turn out like that, right? And so me thinking that I'm just doing something wrong, not realizing that I just hadn't accepted my curls the way they were, because I, it's not encouraged really in this space. And so I loosened myself from the hair typing system, that really arbitrary system, and now I just, I don't care. I don't use it at all. Um, when people ask me, I tell them I'm type 4. I've been saying it for so many years, yet people try to put me in their own box and get mad if my hair doesn't look a particular way. It's a lot. It's a lot. Hair typing is a trap. Don't do it. And then another thing I wish I would have understood is how much a routine matters. And it's a routine catered to your hair and your life, right? So, like, I've tried so many different routines instead of just sticking to one, right? That matters more than anything else. This year, I have consistently washed my hair every two weeks, uh, and that's because it just fits my lifestyle. For a long time there, it was once a week, and it's not how frequently I do it. It's what I do when I wash my hair, right? How I routinely maintain my hair, right? Keeping the moisture in. 
that routine matters more than how frequently I wash my hair, right? When I wash my hair, I follow three particular steps, cleanse, condition, and coat. That is the routine that I've had for so many years since I first heard about it. That is the routine I've had, and that is why the length of my hair is healthy. Whether I wash my hair every two weeks, every three weeks, twice a week, <laughs> that routine is what matters. And then the routine in between washing, and which helps me make sure that my hair doesn't dry out, those routines matter, not the product. I have been such a product junkie over the years. At this point, I don't even want to own all the products I own. I just don't want to throw out everything I own at the same time. It's a personal problem. But um, routine matters so much more than any product I will ever buy. And then speaking of products, sticking to a set of products. <laughs> that should have been the thing that everybody preaches that nobody preaches. Stick to a second set of products and as you learn your hair, troubleshoot. Figure out how to make products work for you in various ways. You can use the same set of products for a twist out and a braid out. I cannot tell you how many years I had different products for twist outs, different products for braid outs, different products for wash and goes, etc. When it's just not necessary, like I can have a set of products from a singular brand if I wanted to, and they could get me through all the styles, right? Afros, wash and goes, etc. I just didn't know that, right? We had an industry here on YouTube where consumerism mattered more. Everybody still wants to see the newest products from influencers. And I think most of us aren't really with that shit anymore. I mean, I'm telling you, if someone had told me just buy a set of products that cover cleansing, conditioning, and pick a style to master and choose some products for it, <laughs> that would have been so helpful to me over the years instead of me trying to just do every style with every set of products. That would have just been so helpful. Somebody wish they had given me that advice. And then a few like tools I wish people would have told me, tools and products. Elasticity treatments, my God, like balanced conditioners. Huh, if someone had told me about that before I learned about it, I wouldn't have been trying to figure out, okay, do I use a moisturizing conditioner? Do I use a protein conditioner? No, you can't use a protein a conditioner with protein in it. Like, oh my God, the years we spent on that there. If I'd have just known about balanced conditioners and just been using them all the time, could have saved myself so much energy. So much energy. And then a hooded dryer, if I'd have bought that thing sooner, it would have saved me so much time and energy. It is the investment that is necessary um, for low porosity naturals. Really, if you have natural hair, getting a hooded dryer is, is like something you should just do. <laughs> it just saves you so much time. And it's like the white girls with their blow dryers, you know. Um, blow dryers work for certain styles, but they don't. Uh, they aren't like amazing for like drying a twist out or a braid out or a roller set, whereas a hooded dryer can get you the full gamut. So I wish somebody would have told me like in my natural hair starter kit, which I do have videos at different price points, so I'll link them below. But like someone, if they'd have given me a natural hair starter kit, it, I would have loved a set of products that included an elasticity treatment and a hooded dryer. That would have got me a really, really long way. And then in my starter kit, I would really love a detangling brush. Um, I give out the cosmology brush these days when I'm giving people things, but just a good detangling brush, I mean, oh, that would have saved me so much trouble <laughs> over the years of just oh, terrible detangling. These weren't available when I first went natural. I didn't know anything about the wet brush. It, it was probably around, I just didn't know about it. But this certainly wasn't. <laughs> So, I mean, that would have been amazing um, way back when. Just someone to tell me, child, just, just, just use this brush, <laughs> which is what I do to people now, <laughs> I wish. But in the comments below, let me know. What are some things you wish you would have known before going natural? Like what advice would you wish someone would have given you before you decided to go on this natural hair journey? I'd really like to know, and I think it'd be useful for other people because um, there are still people who go on this journey every single day. So in the comments, definitely write your answer below. And I'll leave links in the description box to some of the things I've talked about, my favorite hair care brands, this detangling brush, uh, my hair dryer review, 
I'll leave some tips, some tricks, some detangling videos, etc. in the description box below. I have a lot of videos out there, guys. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you like and subscribe before you go so we can see each other in the next one. Because it's Christmas time. Bye. Try to figure this out Cause you love